Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good night, actually. It's now night time. And uh, we're in the season of spring. It is the mon month of March. So good night and welcome to Words of Pearls. And once again, I am your host, Florencia Changadita. And I am found on Facebook under that name or YouTube under Flo, F-L-O, Chang, C-H-A-N-G hyphen A-G-D-A. Now, if you have someone who's not on Facebook and you wanna share this message with them, you can always send it to them and uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. And uh, also when you're over there, you know, to share, make sure you like, if you like it, it's up to you, okay? We all have choice to do or not to do. So today's title is uh, Life of Integrity. So what is integrity? It's like basically honor or living an upright life, right? And that's what it is. Well, I got this title from a scripture. Uh, Pastor Paul Blake had challenged us to read the Psalms. Well, you know, we read our Bibles anyway. Um, so why not include a psalm in it or two, right? So I want to share this psalm with you. So I was reading this psalm, Psalm 101, and it says, I will sing of your love and justice, Lord. I will praise you with songs. I will carefully, I'll be careful to live a blameless life. Yeah, he said he'd be careful to live a blameless life. So how many of you find it difficult to live a blameless life, right? It says, when will you come to help me? I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. I find that to be, uh, I love I love that. Let me just say, I love what he said, that I will live a life of integrity in my own home, because sometimes that's the place that we do not live an upright or honorable life, right? At home, that because when we go out in public, we pretend for others, right? We pretend to the world, pretend to our friends, pretend on IG, pretend on um, Facebook, pretend on YouTube, TikTok, right? We pretend on all the platforms, the media, uh, uh, social media platforms, right? And so we pretend, right? What well, we wear our caps on, uh, but at home, mm, no cap, right? But the truth is, and the truth is, are we the same people we are at home as we are out on social media? Are we the same people we are at home as we are on the job? Are we the same people we are at home for those who go to church as we are at church? Are the same people we are at home in our social groups, right? Are we the same people? Do we lead a life of integrity at home? You know, I remembered uh, a young lady, she was dating someone and she said she noticed that he ended up... Um, you know, well, she got out of the relationship, um, thankfully, before they got married. But she, one thing she said, but the, they were heading down that path way. But she said um, she used to notice that it was an interracial relationship. And she noticed that when they were dating, um, that he would, you know, when they went out to restaurants or bars, that he would be nasty to the waitresses or people of color, right? But he was always nice to her. He was always sweet to her. And um, came today when there it was, where he laid it out on the line for her, you know? Uh, and she said she saw it coming and he was abusive, you know? But it, the thing is, um, who we practice, who we are at home, you know, who we are at home, that's going to come out, out in public. Um, Jamaicans have a saying, how you dance at home is how you're going to dance abroad. How you dance a yard, they say, is how you dance abroad, 
right? Meaning whatever we practice at home, however we live at home, no matter how much we pretend for IG, TikTok, faith, whatever the social platform that is out there, no matter how much we, we, we pretend for the world, for, for our jobs, for church, for other places, who we are at home. And that's who our families know, is it not? That's who the people at home um, know us to be. And so I love that he said, I will lead a life of integrity in my own home because it begins at home. You know, I can't tell you the amount of uh, idioms that I know that starts with at home. Charity begins at home, right? We know all these things. It begins at home. Um, as a teacher, I know that I was my children's first teacher, right? When uh, my students came to school, I would know if they were being taught at home or not, or what they learned from home. They, their first, uh, they, they first start learning things at home. And it's up to us as teachers to either reinforce what is being taught at home, if it is the right thing, or mm, break it down, erase that, and let's start a new slate, right? So this is how it is, but it all begins at home. And so as I continue to read the scripture, it said, I will refuse to look at anything that is vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. Boy, I thought, wait a minute, hold up, David. Now, David didn't have television, right? This is the psalmist, David. He didn't have television, right? To look at all. I mean, there's so much, so many. Sometimes, you know, we binge watch and shows about murders and about uh, what scary movies. Scary, if you binge watch on a scary movie, I... I can guarantee that you're gonna become a fearful person. You're probably either going to develop anxieties or you're going to go into depression. Why? Because you have allowed all of this to come into your spirit, into your soul, into your whole being. Whatever we take in through our eyes, We've got to be careful about the things that we watch, right? And, you know, whatever we watch, it's going to, it's going to notice your language will change. Listen to some rap music, whatever we take in through our ears and our eyes, the things we binge on, the things we, listen, if you eat fried chicken every single day, you do not exercise. You just keep eating fried chicken and, and, and biscuits with gravy and you sop it up and eat that every day. You're going to put on weight. Yes. Is that not so? If you watch movies with a lot of cursing or I remembered watching. Um, uh, uh, this is going to this is many years ago. Um, Rambo. First Blood, ooh, 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 baby, I watched that. I was like, what? You can't talk to me, what? <laughs> ooh, I tell you at the end of the movie. So can you imagine if I now watch all those movies or Training Day with Denzel Washington, just watching that list by the end of it, you're as violent as anything else. Just saying, I mean, you can watch a movie for two hours and if it can influence you after two hours, how much more if you spend six, eight hours watching similar kinds of movies over and over and over, violent movies with shootings and killings and stabbings or worse when you watch, I don't know for anyone, but if I watch, um, movies about injustice, it gets to me. It angers me. So I will no, never binge watch um, uh, documentaries on uh, injustice. I don't. And sometimes I can't even do two hours of a documentary that is really, really, listen, 
lynchings and certain things. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Me personally, I cannot watch it fully through. Um, I remember there was a movie that came out. I think it was last year. I don't remember what the name of the movie was. Um, I had wanted to see it. I think it was a, a true story of a young man. Uh, I can't even remember the title and name, but I see, I, I blocked it out. My, my daughter told me, she said, mom, I know you, not a movie for you. Because, you know, certain things like that, I, I can't. Well, you know, I'm not... Back in the day, I used to watch, I, I loved, um, you know, movies with Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, you know, those folks. But over the years, I've grown, I've evolved, I'm not there, I can't, I don't watch those, because I don't want to be an angry person, I don't want to be a violent person, so I don't. Uh, documentaries I do watch, I still watch. It is good to know what's going on or what the truth was about some of uh, our social justice issues, you know, what they really were. However, um, I cannot really go through it all. I have to take it in segments and sometimes I have to ask someone, you know, else who's watching it, like, hey, what was this part about? Or I'll just stop it and come back and started from where I ended, you know? And uh, usually I have to pray and, and, and fill my soul with the word of God, seriously, before I attempt those. Just keeping it real, because I'm a woman every day and I'm a black woman every single day. So I keep, I'm keeping it real. So that's what I do. But uh, we have to be careful about the things that we really watch and um, binge watching, especially. It's one thing to watch something for two, a movie for two hours. It's another to watch similar movies for six, eight, 10, 12 hours. And there are people who will binge watch on certain things, binge watch on scary movies, binge watch on violent movies. And you, you'll notice the change. You hear the change in the speech, you notice certain little changes. So, you know, we have to be careful. And so uh, he said that, and then, I, you know, as I was saying, it was David and I laughed and I, not that Bathsheba was vile or vulgar. She wasn't, she was somebody's wife. She was just happened, to she was taking her bath on the rooftop, just that he lived in the palace and he could see where she was. And maybe that day he was looking through the wrong window, but um, yeah, he knew his eyes took him somewhere. Also, you know, we have to be careful. And while, while we're talking about this, sometimes we're in relationship, people are, people are in marriages that they may not be satisfied or things may be going on, but it's up to you to let your marriage work, you know? It's not up to someone else. And so many times, you know, we look out the wrong window and see the wrong thing. You know, you see the guy or you see the girl and mm -mm, don't look out the wrong window. So anyway, wasn't part of it, but now it is. So continue reading. He said he hates all who deal crookedly. You know, sometimes, hmm, let me just wait. I, I, I had to. <laughs> so he said he hates all, he, had, he will have nothing to do with them. He, then he said, I will reject perverse, I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. So listen, I am telling you that that scripture right there and verse seven also said, I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house and liars will not stay in my presence. Now, let me ask you, is that something easy for you to do or is it difficult for you to do? Because, you know, he said, um, uh, starting, let me go back up. Hold on, hold on. He said, um, uh, uh, I hate those who deal crookedly. Sometimes, you know, we get involved with folks or we um, that do crooked things that steal, you know, we have folks who will steal things from their jobs. And when they steal it from their jobs and give it to you, if you know it's still stolen, do you take it? Do you receive it? I mean, come on. 
And uh, he says, I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil, right? How easy is that to do sometimes? You know, sometimes when I watch some movies or shows or whatever it is, uh, have you ever watched reality TV and seen people getting drunk and disorderly? And, and sometimes you'll find that one person who will have the integrity to say, you know what, no, I don't drink. And others will ridicule that person. Why is that? Shouldn't we accept each other for who we are? But if a person doesn't drink, the rest of those who drink will try to get to inveigle that person. If you have friends like that in your life, I suggest right now, get rid of them. Seriously, seriously. I mean, seriously, why? God forces himself on no one. Why should anyone force you to do anything that is not good for you? If they want to drink, fine. That is what they choose to. It's their choice. But if I don't drink, how dare you try to force me to drink? And there are people who will inveigle others to do things that are wrong and I don't understand when the others fall for it. Why, when you know it's wrong that you, or it can bring harm to you or even your friends. I am telling you, it is always good to have a sane, sound mind friend around. I mean, everybody needs a sound mind friend, a friend who is responsible and reliable, one who has integrity, one who will stand up, one whose no means no, and their yes means yes. Ah, we all need that kind of person around because sometimes when the foolishness and the madness and the mayhem starts, that person has to shut it down. You need that. You need that. So he says that, you know, um, he will not allow deceivers to serve in his house and liars will not stay in his presence. And sometimes, and let me talk to us who are Christians. I mean, this message is for everybody. It really is. However, for us who are Christians, there are times that we know that our Christians, bro Christian brothers and sisters are lying, are deceptive as heck, and we stand for it. We're like, okay. And we say, you know what? That's a nice person. And you say, you know what? That's a kind person. They lie, they gaslight, they manipulate, they cheat, they steal, they do all kinds of things. And we're just like, you know what? but God is working on them. You know what? Maybe we need to take a page out of David's book. He said, I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house and liars will not stay in my presence, my God. Huh? And then he says, what? Listen, he says, I will not tolerate people, that's verse five, who slander their neighbors. I'm reading from Psalm 105. I will not endure conceit and pride, but we do it as Christians all the time. We'll just, we don't even tell the folks. Did you know I just learned that gaslight, no, narcissism is a, a mental malady. It's a disorder. And yet we know so many narcissistic people and we're not going to say, you know what, you need to get help. And I'm guilty of that because I don't say anything. You now, when I find people trifling, I say, you know what, they trifling, and I'm leaving them in their trifling state. <laughs> All right, pray for the sister, pray for her, pray for this sister, pray for her. Yes, it's true. When I find people, oh, I might distance myself in a way, you know, but I won't um, say mm, you're really, truly trifling. I'm just like, they've got to know they're trifling. Don't you think so? You, you know, who agrees with me? I don't even know who I'm talking to. I'm probably talking to myself, but whatever time you reach this message, you can always write it in the chat and let me know, right? But when he said that, though, I thought about, you know, I, I remember once someone told me that they went to um, help a relative to babysit their, their relative, and then the relatives were arrested. 
cry because they were caught shoplifting. And the person said they realized at that stage of the game that their relatives had stolen pretty much everything they had in the house, you know, like sheets, curtains, things of that nature. Even there, they found out the, the microwave and things of that nature, television. So my question to you is, if you have relatives, you know, I remember once, uh, uh, <laughs> I remember this, this, this lady, she, her son got caught. Um, no, the police raided their house. I don't, I don't know if they were being watched or if they were tipped off. I really don't know what happened there, but her house was raided. And um, she has two teenage sons. At the time, she had two teenage sons. And her teenage sons were bringing in, you know, not just games, the video games, the latest video games for them to play. They brought in new TV. They brought in new couch. They brought in all manner of things. Turns out that they were a part of a gang. It was this place on Flatbush Avenue um, across from King's Plaza. And um, I don't know what the deal was, but they were a part of that ring. And so, you know, I'm thinking here, when my kids would come home with a pencil that wasn't theirs because I labeled every single thing that they had, their crayons, their, and, and I would write their initials on each single crayon. I did, I was that mother. And on the box and on the, con the, 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 the container that held the pencils, on the ruler, on the sharpener, on the pencils, everything. I would label everything. I even got, at one point, I got a label. I would just like put initials and everything. And so if a pencil came home that did not have their initial on it, where you get that from, how you got it? And they had to bring it. Well, I borrowed it. Well, you borrowed it. Do you know when someone borrows something, what they're supposed to do? Give it back. So you're going to bring it back. And for bringing their pencil home, you're going to give them an extra pencil. How is that? Let me tell you, they weren't coming home with anybody else's pencil when they know they had to take out of their pencil stock to give to someone just for borrowing a pencil that they it may have inadvertently come home with. But whether or not, you know, I taught them you respect other people's property, never take someone's property even amongst themselves. To the, until this day, my kids are like that. They never take each other's clothing or anything without asking the other. They're like, are you using this? Can I use it? Do you have so-and-so? May I borrow it? Or can I have it? You have to ask. You have to respect other people's property. And if they broke the thing for the other person, I would give them the money and take them to the store, let them buy it and give it back to their rich sibling. And now they're responsible adults, thanks to Jesus. However, just saying that, you know, if we know that goods or how, how, how would you feel eating something that you know someone stole? I, I'm like, I think it will kind of turn my stomach. Listen, unless, and I, don't get me wrong. I know there've been people who, who are living in poverty and they've had to take food. And that I understand. But if your child's bringing things into your home and you're enjoying that, how does that make you feel? I'm just talking about living a life of integrity at home. So. The question is, are you saying yes to something you should have said no to? And let me ask you something. If Jesus walks into your house right now, is everything cool? If Jesus should walk into your house right now, is everything copacetic? Is everything cool? Are you going to say, you know what? Oh, jeez. I don't want him to go into that corner. No, ooh, can't let him go in that closet. Ooh, can't go in the bedroom. Ooh, can't go in the bathroom. Where can't he go in your house? Just, just asking, are you going to feel embarrassed or are you going to feel guilty? Well, if 
you think you're going to feel guilty or embarrassed, then do something about that. Why don't you? The thing is, God loves you too much to leave you in the situation that you're in today. I pray that this helps you to live a life of integrity at home. That's where we all need to start. We don't need to go out in the world. You know, we live a wrong life at home and we go out in the world and we tell people, this is what you need to do. That's what you need to do. And we don't need to tell anybody because you know what? The Bible tells us that we're a written epistle. Each and every one of us is being read by someone else. Everyone is being read. Every one of us is being read by another person. Ask the people in business. They tell you it takes them how many minutes to sum up who you are when they first see you. You go in an interview, boom. Yeah, it is there. If it's there in the business world, it's there everywhere. We're being read. We're a written epistle. So, um, and for the record, let's not think we're fooling anyone because the lives we live, we could say one thing and do something else. People are being more enlightened today. It may have taken us a while to, to really get to, to know somebody, but today I tell you, the way time, we see the, the, they call them Corona babies and I hate to call them that, oh, COVID babies. I hate to call them that because they were, they were all simply born during this pandemic uh, or pandemic babies is another name they're being called. But these babies, listen, they're up and running and going and going and talking and walking. And that tells you that the eyes, our eyes are being opened to truth more quickly today. And still yet, and unfortunately, so many folks are in, still in darkness. But you know what I've, I've, I've learned from the scripture and the word of God is always true. And that's why we should read the Bible because we learn a lot, especially from the Proverbs as well and the Psalms, all of what the Bible teaches us. The Bible is a great teaching tool. It says, those who practice deception are themselves deceived. That's why I used to question why are people who deceive, you know, who like to deceive others, why don't, why can't they see that uh, we know that they're being deceptive? Why can't they see it? And when I read that portion of scripture, I said, oh, now I get it. Those who practice deception are themselves deceived. So, you know what? If you've been practicing deception, how about stopping today? If you've been binge watching the wrong things, how about stopping today? You know, I remembered that um, uh, Joel Holstein said his mother, when she was diagnosed with cancer and given over to die, she, st she, she started to watch uh, comedies, you know, things that made her laugh. And she's alive and well, how many years later today? And the Bible tells us a merry heart do it good as to medicine. So instead of binge watching and things that make you angry and upset, because though, you know, um, to, to, to get angry and to be upset, that takes away from life. But to be joyful, to, to rejoice, to laugh, that adds years to your life, literally. So I pray that this Words of Pearl does help you in some way, shape, or form. And if not you, maybe there's a friend, a relative that you think needs to hear this. So please go to my YouTube page once it's up. Just give me a few minutes to upload it because I didn't do it live on, on YouTube. And, um, and share with your family or friend, why don't you? Because this is what we do. Um, I read something in the Bible, I can't remember, but sharing you know, if you have um, resource information, uh, any kind of information that you know helps, to share that is doing a great service to someone. Knowledge is power. Information is power. You see, the more knowledgeable we become, the more we can make informed decisions instead of just making blind decisions, right? So, and the more informed decisions we make, the better ch our choices will be, right? And so we're able to live a better life. So I pray that you are living a life of integrity. And if you're not, it's not too late to 
to change. And there's no shame in the game. Listen, we've all been at different stages of life, but God, right? He's the one who helps us. He's the one who cleans us up. up. So listen, if you need help in changing, call on the Lord. Why don't you call on Jesus? He certainly will help you. And if you have not yet given your life to the Lord, hey, why not try him? Try Jesus today. You never know. You never know. I just know your life will be better. Trust. If it's not better, you got to tell me about it. But I guarantee it will be. So, because you know what? We all go through things in life. However, when we have the Lord on our side, it makes it a whole lot easier. So, go on. Live that life of integrity at home. But if you're not doing it as yet, there's still hope. Ask for help. The Lord, Christ Jesus, he will help you. Now go on and have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Know that I love you, love you, love you. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves you even so much more. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. I think it's going to go up to even 70 degrees after today being as cold as it is. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. And then it's going to slowly peter back down again. So if you can, you know, unless you want to stay home and relax. But if you want to get some sun, if you want to go outside and just enjoy it. Tomorrow will be the day. If you're in this part of the hemisphere, other parts, you're already having warm weather, right? So enjoy. Know that you're loved, 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 loved by me and loved even more by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, more than any love you've ever known. All righty, take care. Have a good night. Oh, you know what? Let me just check my, before I sign off totally, let me check my, uh, to see if anybody was on. I'll just give you a little shout out. Um, whoops, sorry. That just tells you who I was watching just earlier. Um, let me see. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. So, well, okay. No one's on, but it's okay at whatever time you see this message, <laughs> know that I, I pray that it's, uh, it, if it doesn't make you smile, at least it helps you to do something better. It should empower you to make a change, okay? All righty, or bring a smile to you or give you a pat on the shoulder. So have yourself a good night.